variable data printing is typically restricted to four color printing because the variations of the data field um, has to be swapped out, which is possible with four color printing. However, if you wanted to print this onto a metalized material, as is the case with printing on digital printing presses, where you take a metalized sheet and then we have to print with a white ink and CMYK. If you wanted an area in metallic foil to be varied, it is impossible because every variation field has to have a manual white ink mask. So if we look at this design here, if we actually were to have this text change in a metallic foiled color, then it wouldn't work because the designer or pre-press operator would have to manually make a white ink mask for each variation. So if you had 10,000 names in your database that were to swap out, you would have 10,000 manual white ink masks to make. Now the benefits of using color logic is that it allows you to be able to add variable data to colored foils for when printing onto metallic foil substrates, such as digital applications. And in this demonstration, we're going to be using XMPI's UDirect plugin for Adobe InDesign. Now XMPI can do some incredible things but we're only going to use this as a very basic um, variable data here just to show you how it actually works with inside the software. So first of all, I'm going to go up to my document. You would go to new color swatch and you would load a color swatch from the color library. So you'd go to the color logic library and add your colors that you want to work with. Now I've already got added some into my directory here, my swatch directory. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to color these up. So first of all, we're going to do some metallic text. So the background here is black, so let's choose a gold. So I need a gold color from the Color Logic library. Next, we're going to add a dimensional effect. So let's just color up some of these boxes. I'm going to do a blue, a green, and a pink. So first of all, dimensional effect. Now in the background, we're using a metallic color called number 58. So it's Color Logic 58. And that has its pre-built white ink plate with CMYK. And I'm going to go and select my text and I'm going to color up dimensional effect. So what we're doing is we're saying the background's metallic, the content is dimensional effect. I'm going to go through and do this on the blue one. We're going to do a watermark and this one here we're doing watermark effects plus. So you just click and apply the colors from the color logic palette. Now if we have a look at what's happening here, let's go to our separation preview and we'll turn off the CMYK and we'll see we have a separation that's been created called CL4713 Silver. This is the Color Logic Effect printing plate. It's where you're going to see the effect on the print. Now to explain this, everything that you see white on this document here, all the white text, this grey here is a tint of, t of white, it's basically where the white ink is going to be. So everything that's white is white ink. Everything that's black is where the substrate will appear and everything is a tint is a tint of white so for example 50% white 60 70 80% white etc so if this text here was to change this white text that's going to print with white ink would need a unique white ink mask so let's go back to the document and let's start using XMPI so they have this little plugin here it's kind of handy you can access that through the XMPI you create print button it even gives you a step-by-step -step guide on how to do this, which I think is really slick, a really cool feature. It gives you a guide quickly of how do I do this, and it's really simple. First of all, we go to link the data source, and that's your uh, database. So this is my database I created earlier. I'm going to go to the ColorLogic database, which I created out of Excel, and it is a tab delimited database. I click on OK. So database has been completed completed successfully, so that's good, so that's now in my database. All I have to do now is select my text and apply that database to it. I'm going to go through and apply that database to each one of these fields. And you'd have different databases, you can apply different things to different boxes. Okay, so now let's take a look at these files. Um, down here we can actually cycle through this and you'll notice how the numbers are changing. So we're going 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. Now let's go back to the color logic separation. Now remember, whatever was white is white ink. Whatever is the black is the substrate. So this is a white ink mask here. 
Now watch what happens as we cycle through these. The white ink masks are changing. So this is a tone of white, it's a tint of white ink, automatically creating that white ink mask for you on the fly as you're processing. And this is a unique feature to ColorLogic. Remember that it's not possible doing this without the ColorLogic palettes and plugins. By, but by combining this with existing technologies like XMPies you create, it is a great tool to be able to add new things to your print. So if you could imagine doing a piece of packaging, it could be you know, whiskey box packaging. So it could be um, a special celebration, you know, David's 50th birthday it could have his own name in gold foil on that whiskey label or on the whiskey box packaging. You could have wine labels, beer labels, microbreweries, everything that could change. You're now no longer restricted to doing variable data in black or white or a color. We can do variable data in foil. That's a new, a unique world first technology. So by using color logic, not only do we have this varied text in metallics, we can have these varied effects. So when this prints, the metallic and this text here is going to change dimension. It's going to go from a lighter to a darker color. We're going to have watermarks that subliminally appear and disappear in the print or more covert separations. Everything can be variable. So now we're unleashing the power of variable data printing for digital printing presses using ColorLogic's Process Metallic Color System. In the second part of this demonstration, we're going to apply the variable data to a live job. So we're taking this save the date card where we're going to have a variable image of the happy couple, which was going to change out for each variation. And that's going to match up to the name of the couple that's getting married. And then we're going to have a variable data field for the date. Now, this bit here that's gold will print with a gold foil. So it's going to be varied gold foil done using ColorLogic. So to do this, first of all, we need to go into the XMPy you create. We go and specify uh, the data source. So we're going to link this to the data source. We're going to add the ColorLogic demo data source. That's now done successfully. And let's just show the data columns. So you can see here, you have the name, which is going to replicate with the name of the happy couple and the date is going to be the date specified. So let's just take a look at that in Excel and see what we have in our files. So we have a name column and a date column. So this information you'd obviously acquire through whether you're doing an online template based system so you have a specified feel of you know the net four names of both happy couples and the dates in a specific format so it all marries up together. So two columns and these are the two columns that comes into here name and date. So next thing we're going to do is add in our um, assets folder. The assets is what we're going to use for the images. So data source is for data or text. The assets is for our pictures. So we have all our named images in here. And now we need to add in a new content object for those images. So we're going to have the happy couple. I'm going to give that the name. It's going to be a graphic file. And if the graphic file matches the name, I'll click on OK. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go through and assign all these variable fields. So let's just select this picture box in here. I'm going to apply the happy couple to that. So the first picture comes in. Next, we're going to highlight our text. So from here, I highlight the text that's going to change. We're going to change that to the name. And then this text here is going to be on the date. Now, one thing to be aware of is that you need to apply um, a style for the fonts. Otherwise, it will go back to its basic defaults and you can apply the styles in your rules. So you can go to a text style and let's just go through and actually create one of those. So if you have your documents set here with this text, it's easier just to go up to the type, graphics, st uh, character styles, give it a new character style. So we'll call this name or let's go variable name. Click on OK. And we're going to highlight that one as well. New character style and variable date. And that just makes sure that when you're doing your changes in here, so let's just apply, we did that didn't we? So let's go into the 
the rule. So here we can apply with the text style and apply it to the name. That makes sure that none of these reset to default. And in this one here, edit that rule, text with a style, and this is going to be the date. Okay, so now if we cycle through, and let's have a look at these. So we're in number one. Now I've got Karen and Mark, the happy couple changes, and you'll see how the pictures, the names, and the dates all change. So that's variable data printing. And the idea being is that this part here, this gold foil or any colored foil data is not possible without ColorLogic because for each variation of the name change, the white ink mask surrounding all this information has to change. So if you have to make a manual white ink mask, variable data doesn't work in metallic foils. But with ColorLogic, because we have the white created at the rip, we do not make the white separation manually. All this is possible. And let's just check that on our separation. So let's turn off the CMYK. This bit here where it says Eliza and Darcy are getting married, this bit here is actually your white ink. So if this watch this change as I cycle through. So each time you've got a different variable field, which means a different white ink mask, only possible using the color logic system. Okay, so there we have it. One variable data example of how to apply ColorLogic with variable data applications.